Okay, we're going to now take a look at r squared, which is the coefficient of determination. r squared is exactly what it sounds like, the square of the correlation coefficient. It can be applied to either the Pearson or the Spearman coefficient. So if you look at the table below, if the r value is 0.2, then the r squared is 0.2 squared, or 0.04. The r, if the r value is 0.7, then the r squared value is going to be 0.49, and so on. What do we learn from r squared? Well, r squared can tell us the proportion of variance shared by the x and y variables. As long as there's no temporal order for x and y, then we would say that x and y share some specified portion of the variance. In other words, in the preceding slide, when we had a correlation of 0.2, the r squared value was 0.04. If we multiply that r square value by 100, it gives us 4, or 4% 4 of the variance between x and y is shared. But suppose there is a temporal order between x and y. For the sake of convenience, we'll assume that x occurs first in time. Then we say that a specified percent of the variance in y is explained by x. Here's an example. What if we ask students to report each Monday how many parties, dates, or other similar extracurricular activities they had over the weekend? At the end of the semester, we correlate the total number of activities with grade point average. The R value, or the R squared value rather, would tell the proportion of variance in grade point average that ex that's explained by self-reported frequency of extracurricular activities. It wouldn't make any sense to argue that the proportion of variance in frequency of activities is explained by GPA. So the temporal order of the variables in this case is very important. What's so important about R squared? Why is it important to be able to explain variance? Well, it's one thing to state that variables are related to one another. That's what the correlation coefficient gives us. But it doesn't tell us really how much they have in common. I mean, we can infer that the greater the correlation coefficient, the more they have in common with each other. But remember, the correlation coefficient doesn't really express anything in terms of units of measure. It's more precise to be able to state how much two variables actually do have in common. R squared lets us state how much x and y have in common. That's why it's valuable to us. If R squared equals 1, or 100%, if the correlation between x and y is equal to 1. So it's possible for a variable to explain as much as 100% of the variance in one variable or as little as 0% of the variance. You can go anywhere in between those two values. To wrap this up, let's take two examples. First, we have an x and y variable with no temporal relationship between each other, no temporal order doesn't matter if x comes first or y comes second or vice versa. If the r square is equal to 0.25, then we would say that x and y share 25% of their variance or have 25% of their variance in common. Now we turn our attention to a case where x precedes y in time. If the r squared is 0.45, then we would say that x explains 45% of the variance in y. And that sums up all we need to know really about r squared.